Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson and available wherever podcasts can be found. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, little notify bell next to make sure you're always getting your new Going In Raw notifications. We're also available uh, wherever fine podcasts can be found. Uh, leave us a rating, review, or comment. It really does help boost the exposure of Going In Raw. Uh, and of course, this is Matt Chat. It's powered mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. the patrons. Mm-hmm. $20 and up gets mm-hmm. you uh, your video question here on Matt Chat. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's so much fun. I like seeing all the new Matt Chatters, all the old Matt Chatters. All the Matt Chatters. All the Matt Chatters. Uh, I love this show. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, but you don't have to on the Patreon. We got rewards all the way from one dollar and up, one dollar. So yeah, uh, be sure to all check the way that up out. Two hundred thousand dollars. All the way up to yeah. I'm not even sure that's a possibility. I don't know if they can. It's do there, that. people are so inclined. Anyways, we're gonna kick things off with two questions. Both that are basically the same question. Yeah. From Zach S and Graham, we're running back to back, and then we'll do the answering. Take it away, gentlemen. What's good, Steve Morrison? Many friendos out there. That is your match chat. All of them are Zach Getz. Coming at you with another match chat question. The question this week is Steve Morrison. Let's assume Roman Reigns, with his return in the time frame that we have, does have a match at WrestleMania. Where do you think that's going to be, and how do you think the fans will react? And do you think it's going to be a necessary and needed addition to the card, or no? Thanks, boys. Hi, Steve. Hi, Larson. My question this week is. With Roman coming back and all, which I was delighted about, do you think, what do you think he could be doing at WrestleMania? Do you think he'll, he'll get involved in sets, match, and he'll have his own match? What do you think? Do sweet, hardy handshake. Thank you, Zach S. and Graham. Thank you very much. Everybody wants to know, Larson, what's Roman going to do? What's, what's Roman going to do? do? What's, what's Roman, Roman going to do? do? So what's he going to do? Don't know. I don't know. I don't have access to their script. Uh, I don't know. I don't have... Well, speculate. Luckily, That's what we do here. We luckily, speculate. I don't have access to the inside of Vince McMahon's brain. However, oh dear. I suppose I can speculate. I'll go first. Why not? Um, I think we will get at least this. We will get at least a sucker punch on Baron Corbin. Hell, oh, he might actually, he might actually, given that it was set up in a manner, uh, uh, you know, look, Baron Corbin is kind of the new Seamus, isn't he? Yeah. If you want a guaranteed reaction in the form of booze, you put Baron out there and he's hapless. He's so much fun as a heel. He basically he's the guy who you can get a ton of of good face heat on a guy if that person uh, humiliates Baron Corbin. Yep. Look at John Cena, uh, Braun Strowman sometimes, and uh, I think Roman Reigns, given that he has declared that his new platform doesn't involve titles and involves uh, using his platform uh, to help spread the the love that he received from the leukemia thing. Um, I think a match against Baron Corbin where he essentially, it's essentially a squash match. Uh, nobody's going to boo Roman. No, everybody's going to love that. If he goes out there and just beats crap out of Baron. Oh, yeah, Corbin. No one's going to boo that. Nobody's going to boo that. No one's gonna do that. It'll be like a five minute match. It'll be quick. It'll be easy. It'll, you know, he's not going to need to shake off a lot of ring rust for something no, like he that. Take a lot of bumps. Yeah. It'll be fun. One, um, two, at done. the very least, we'll, we'll have a shield moment after uh, Seth wins. All three of them oh, be in the yeah. ring. Yeah, Seth, new Universal Champion. Dean's probably out of there, so it'll be a bit more emotional. Yeah, they'll have the the fist bump. They'll do the thing. Their final reconciliation before Dean moves on. There he is. Look at this yeah. guy. Um, People love him now. But you're you you're onto something there with a potential match. Um, it was kind of set up with uh, four heels attacking Dean, Roman, and Seth, kind of make make making the save. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to get a match against any four of these gentlemen. You know, you Elias, know, yeah. Bob yeah. Lashley, Baron, mm-hmm. or Drew McIntyre. You know what the uh, – oh, I, I can almost guarantee it's not going to be Drew. I think no, this is got, kind of in order. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably switch Baron and Lashley. It's kind of in order of how I think it will go. Either Elias or Baron are the most likely. Um, yeah. Drew least likely. Yeah, because Drew, I think, they got, I think they still have plans for him. I hope so. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of the bigger question really becomes, what are they even doing with Braun Strowman right now? Like – they weren't even doing any anything with him before Roman came back. Now Roman's back. He like, whoosh, yeah, no, falls even further down the ladder. Yeah, so that's sort of a weird situation. It is very much a weird situation. Anyways, uh, you know, it's not a weird situation uh, when the Matt Chat Hall of Famer Christian has, Christian has a great question. Let's hear what he has to say. Hey Steve, hey Larson, it is the Brock Lesnar of Matt Chat, the Hall of Famer Christian, with a Matt Chat question for you guys today. 
My question today is, what would you rather be the last image of WrestleMania? I'm talking the Daniel Bryan yes moment, the Seth Rollins spinning the belt. I'm, I'm talking the lasting image of WrestleMania. Would you rather it be the four horsewomen, each holding up a title except for Charlotte holding up Becky's hand as the fireworks go? Or would you rather see the shield knowing it's Dean's last night one last time doing a shield fist bump? What's a better lasting image for Mania? Too sweet and a hearty handshake. Thank you, Christian! Christian! At last, you've returned to my chat! Dun, 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 dun. What Larson should be the lasting image, the very what last thing you see should be to send these people home happy it after should eight be hours. Becky standing tall with or without the horsewoman. I think Becky standing tall after making Rhonda tap out as undisputed top man mm -hmm. in WWE. I think that should be the image we go home on. Um, there's going to be a couple of really good contenders to that. So much, there's However, so much conviction here in this fist of yours, my friend. Uh, first, should Kofi win that WWE title earlier on the show, the, uh, the, 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 the euphoria, the enthusiasm that's going to uh, emanate from MetLife Stadium in New Jersey is going to be immense. That's going to be an image. Having 70,000 people chanting Kofi, him holding up that WWE title um, is going to be pretty huge. Also, mentioned it in my previous answer um the the emotions they're going to spew forth should the, the the shield have their final reunion following seth win uh, against brock lesnar that's going to be a really uh, indelible image they're all contenders what should close the show is becky winning uh you kind of asked this question not long ago but it's worth bringing back up has i'm i'm in agree i think the horsewoman should close the show has, however, has the Kofi story and the Roman return, have those sort of organically eclipsed the the Becky Ronda thing? I feel it's Roman on the verge, maybe. man. Roman might have. Maybe even Kofi. It's close. Because here's the thing about Kofi, who would have ever thought? You know what I mean? Like it's so Even rare. Just that, a month ago, I don't think many people would have suspected this was going to happen. I guess. I guess here's my thing: somebody who, in the case of Becky Lynch, it's obvious with her SmackDown Women's Title win, with the way they've been treating her for months now as a big star, you almost already have that sense of validation for Becky Lynch. With Kofi, we don't have it yet. And I kind of feel like the moment of validation means more than whatever storyline logic finale plays out in the case of Becky Lynch. Yeah. And because this Kofi thing sort of came on so suddenly, but has been very organic. Oh, definitely. I wonder if that moment of euphoria might actually eclipse pretty much anything else. There's potential that, and I think also the, the emotion surrounding Roman's return Mm -hmm, that's also big. concerning Dean's on his way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reportedly. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of there's gonna be a lot of emotions going on with whatever the shield does together. Seth finally beating, you know, Bro Brock, Brock, Rock, Brock, all Brock that. finally There's beating, a yeah. lot of really interesting good storylines, all of them worthy of closing the show. Mm -hmm. I just feel like based on uh, uh the impact, the amount of uh narrative energy they've already put forth into it is kinda it kinda, it kinda has to be Becky. Beating Ronda, I think I'm. I think I'm with you on that. And then Sasha Bailey come out. I think they won those tag titles specifically to be in the end of yeah. Mania. I kind, of, I kind of feel like that. Yeah, they'll have some sort of a legends match again. I mean, it's gonna be them probably versus Trish and Lita. I, yeah, it's they win. In the case, yeah, and then close the show. Mm -hmm. They're all all four of them in the ring together. There's some sort of reconciliation between Becky and Charlotte enough for them to all throw up. The, yeah, and it kind of honestly, sign. it kind of feels like it'd be a massive misfire if it was anything like that. It just feels like that's the moment that this has been leading to. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Guillaume has a question. Talk about organic Jacksonville's things. number one. And he's joined by Jacksonville's number two. So let's see what they have to say. Hey there, friendos. This is Jacksonville's number one, Matt Chatter, Guion, And I'm not filming and driving, just to let you know. I've got Jacksonville's number two, my sister, filming for me. Hello. Um, but... 
Anyways, my Mad Chat question for this week is, which superstar had the most organic uh, and best babyface run, and you can't choose Daniel Bryan, and which superstar had the best and most organic heel run, but you can't choose Triple H? Uh, I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are. Um, yeah, so thanks, friendos. This has been Jacksonville's number one. Bye. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you, Gion. Uh Oh, you get to go first. Oh, cool. I kind of feel like the most, <laughs> and I guess you can call this organic, because if I'm not mistaken, it sort of sprung from the hell, his big drop at Hell in a Cell, uh, Mankind. I think that moment, uh, granted the, the, the initial toss off the cell, um, was a scripted moment. I'm not sure the WWE understood quite how over that would get him, um, especially given that he then you know, he would climb back up, fell back through. Everybody saw in that moment that nobody, nobody, nobody in the world of wrestling has more heart, passion, and desire than Mick Foley, than mankind. And the crowd swept him. And granted, they were never uh, uh, long, lengthy title wins, but they swept him to uh, just a massive wave yeah, of yeah. face heat, of face love. Yeah. Um, and he won the title, I believe, three times after that. Something like that. And uh, and boy oh boy, it was uh, it was something else. So I'll give it in terms of the most organic face run. I'll give it to mankind. Uh, and then uh, although your answer is probably it, it eclipses it box office wise. Um, yeah, what else matters? And <laughs> right. And then I'm going to say this for the more so, most organic heel run. Interesting. Uh, Bret Hart, when he came back and became a heel, whenever that was, ninety seven sometime. Um, and he just started like railing against what he saw in the WWE. I kind of just feel that was Bret Hart. Yeah, it kind of was. And I mean, talk about the most organic thing. A guy comes back and he just starts t talking about how he really feels uh, and people start booing him. That's pretty damn organic right there. Yeah. And uh, he left on the most sour of notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I kind of feel like it was kind of feel like it was Bret Hart. Could be. Most organic healer. And then he was like a face in Canada, but here in the States, he hated Americans or whatever. So, yeah. That's about right. I, think, I kind of feel like he feels that way, too. Maybe. Uh, most organic face run. It's got to be Stone Cold. He came in WWE as a ringmaster. The name yeah, Stone Cold, boy. he was a heel. What a hole to dig yourself out yeah. of. Yeah. And uh, uh, do the power of his personality, his mm -hmm. pro mobility. Kind of kick-started at King of the Ring 96, but he was still firmly heel at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was so good as a heel. People loved his work. So 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 charismatic. He captured the zeitgeist of the time. Mm. Uh, people loved him. It was undeniable. He had to be a face and led to the most profitable time. I'm, look, at, I'm all about conviction today. Profitable time in the entire uh, WWE's existence. Uh, organic heel run. I'm gonna go with Jericho and WCW. It's a really good one because uh, no one was behind. No one other than Jericho was behind any of that. Nope. That was all him. Yeah. And he got himself over huge. He, he said, "Can I get a promo? No, but you can have a microphone on the way to the ring." Done. Okay. Cool. I'll use that. I'll yeah. do that. So all the stuff he did in WCW, that was all him. Yeah. And he elevated his stock tremendously. So yep. when he debuted in WWF opposite The Rock. It was monumental. Yeah. It's totally Chris Jericho. And everybody saw him immediately as a star. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he got to the point in WCW where literally he had got himself over so much that management had to be like, no, because we've got people like Hogan who we want to go with. Yeah. But, man, the people wanted it. Yep. Jericho did it all himself. Yep. I agree completely. Yep. Next, new Matt Chatter. Jarvis, he submitted this question uh, last week um, after our deadline, but – we're going to get it on here because it's still uh, something we're talking about. Take it away, Jarvis. Hi, guys. Jarvis here for my first Matt Jack question. And I was thinking, now that Kofi Kingston has a title shot at Fastlane, I think they might do a screw finish there and keep that feud going until WrestleMania. So I was thinking, if they take this feud to WrestleMania, who do you think is going to win? So I want you guys to debate it. Larson, I want you to debate and advocate for the new Daniel Bryan winning. And Steve, I want you to advocate slash debate for Kofi Kingston winning. Thanks, friendos.
Thank you, Jarvis. Thank you, Jarvis. I'm so, actually very disappointed that wasn't Paul Bettany. Oh, if you recall, yeah, yeah, before yeah. he was Vision. Yeah. And it was Paul, even in the first Iron Man, it was Paul Bettany doing the voice. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they knew, did they know in advance so, yeah. that he was going to develop into Vision as Maybe. like, and they would need the actor? See, that's, that's it's a unified universe there. It's long-term planning yeah, man. right there. Vision, get it? Anyways, uh, Jarvis submitted this question prior to SmackDown airing this week, but I think the overall idea of his question is still absolutely worth discussing. Sure, of course. Um, oh, I go first. Man, I have to make the case that Daniel Bryan is going to come out of this feud on top. He probably will. They just made him that fancy new uh, sustainable, yeah. eco-friendly belt. Um, so even if Kofi does win it, which I hope he does, at Mania, I feel like whenever this feud ultimately culminates, that belt's going to end up back on or on Daniel Bryan's waist. Could be, yeah. um, and it could be, I don't know, a, a two, three-month run with the belt for Kofi. I hope it's not just you know a matter of a month or a couple weeks. I hope they do something interesting. Sus- with it. Yeah, sustainable. Um, to really help build up himself and the New Day as a faction. But ultimately, I think you know their their long term plan probably is focused on Daniel Bryan having that belt for a while. They probably eventually want to get on with the feud they want to do with Daniel Bryan and Kevin Owens, um, even though they're having this fast lane match. Um, ultimately, I kind of feel like Daniel Bryan will, in the end, whether it's two months or six months, where the case maybe is going to come out on top. Um, but definitely hope Kofi gets a good lengthy reign, mm-hmm. minimum of three months with that title. Yeah. Um- I think in terms of who's going to go over and win the title, I kind of believe at this point that it's going to be Kofi. It'd be weird at this point if it wasn't. Um, I I think that's going to be the case. I think in the end, uh, I mean, who's going to get the final say? I mean, it makes sense that what you're saying is probably the case. Um, Daniel Bryan, they seem to have a lot invested in him. They seem to really, really like this. Um, the fans, I think, are responding in the way that they should be responding. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of hate, but then, of course, the the nerds out there are like, oh, man, I'm all about this guy. He's about recycling and all this kind of stuff. I so, mean, he's the ultimate heel that makes a good point. Yeah, I know, and Everything it's great. Everything he says is, is true. And I think he gets he gets a really great reaction on both both sort of angles of his And one thing WWE has done pretty well the last few years is, is the chase. Mm-hmm. Like when Daniel Bryan was chasing after the WWE title, it was great. But then yeah. once he got the title, it's like, okay, what are we going to do now? Yeah. And they yeah. started a program with Kane. And we're like, oh, yeah. He just beat Batista, terrible. Randy Orton, and Triple H all in the same night. And his mm. first feud was Kane. Narratively, it made sense. It just wasn't. It was. It felt like a massive step down. It did, yeah. Um, and and it was, I remember it was like in a weird bubble. Like they had moved the A story on to something else. Mm-hmm. And he was like stuck in this like weird world title bubble. We mm-hmm. had like both world titles mm-hmm. and he was fighting Kane. Yeah. Yeah, it was strange. Yeah, it was strange. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll put it this way. I think that, yeah, Daniel Bryan's probably going to end up with that title back. Um, and But I, I think that it's going to make Kofi look like a million bucks. I hope that they give him a really strong run for Same two here. or three months. Same here. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, nobody really comes out. I mean, it's like, you know, you look at AJ Styles and, you know, his feud with Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, yeah, he came out on top, but it's not like AJ Styles, you know, looked bad. Yeah, totally, so, totally. There you go. Uh, next, from Cult to False Realities, let's see what he has to say. What's going on, guys? The cult to False Realities here. Back for another Matt Chat question. I just got done watching SmackDown, and I can't believe what just happened. Uh, my question actually has something to do with my first ever Matt Chat question, just a little different. Now, my first ever Matt Chat question, I ask you guys who are three black wrestlers who you think that should have gotten or should hold the WWE Universal or WWE title that's on SmackDown. But my question today is, do you think Vince sees value in black athletes? No, Do you think that he wants them to hold the big titles because from over the history, it doesn't seem like he does. And I know there's going to be a hard question to answer, but could you please do it for me? Too sweet and hearty handshake. Thanks guys. Thank you. Cult of false reality. Thank you. Uh, I'll go first here. Uh, I think there's three cases. There are three obvious cases where Vince McMahon has, overlooked uh, uh, black athletes um, to a degree that, and I'm, I'm not going to say that it's because he doesn't value African-American athletes, um, but I don't know. I'm not on his head, thank God. Uh, but there are three cases where I, can, where I can pitch and say, man, 
these guys would have been killer world champions. Uh, number one, Booker T. Absolutely. Um, Triple H made that that world title really, really hot at the mm-hmm. time. And if Booker T had won it. And, you know, that was sort of Booker T's thing was the, the world title, the WCW title. And, you know, Triple H coming at him with the, you know, the, 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 the racist angle, to be frank, you know, and then him going over at Mania it just didn't make a lick of sense. No, it made zero sense. Booker T needed to win that match. And the, the thing is, here, here's, the, here's the thing about Booker T. I believe Booker T is one of those guys who, if he was in his prime today, the WWE would probably take a look at him. And organically, he'd get so over that mm. they would have to put the title on him. I wonder if part of it, too, and I don't know if you've ever had any factual evidence to back this up, but the idea that Vince, post-purchase of WCW, was hesitant to really push any of the WCW guys because in his mind, he didn't make them. Well, the counter to that is Benoit Guerrero. I know. Um, I, would, I, I, I think it's less that. I think it's more Triple H was so adept at his reign of terror he was so, he, at the time, I just think he thought that holding that belt was everything to get him to where he wanted to be. Well, it was, it was getting heat for heat's sake. Yeah, and that yeah. trumped everything. Um, and I think that Vince probably should have stepped in and been like, no, come on. This story needs to play out this way. <laughs> right. I know. So there's totally. one example. Um, Bobby Lashley, I know, is ECW champion. He was U.S. Um, champ as well. He was U.S. champ. If you take a look at his work in Impact, there is a lot of character stuff mm-hmm. that they didn't go into mm-hmm. during his time in WWE. Mm-hmm. And still really haven't since he returned. And they really haven't. No, they haven't. Um, and even since he returned, yeah, I forget who said this, but, uh, but I mean, he, the dude should be taking on Brock Lesnar oh, right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. You know, you oh, yeah. really should. He's Come been on. lobbying for that match. Yeah, he's great. And then the third and probably actually biggest, in my opinion, is uh is Mark Henry. Now I know he had the big gold belt. That reign kind of felt like a thank you. But if you look at everything, every box that he checks. Oh, all of them. Why didn't he get if you look look at another dude who came in around the same uh, a little bit later than him, uh Kurt Angle. Look at Kurt Angle's push. Why didn't Mark Henry get that? He has the personality, he had the wrestling skills, he had the legitimacy, mm-hmm. he had everything Kurt Angle had. I know. And they 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 made him a member of the nation. Mm-hmm. They did uh, the, the the sexual chocolate thing for a while, which was I mean, yeah, it was great. It was funny, but it was funny because Mark Henry is great. Yeah. Um, if you take a look at his uh, at his uh, the retirement speech that he did years oh later, my gosh. but when he first Brilliant. came in, yeah, give him a Kurt Angle push. I know. Do that. That to me, and I know. Granted, I understand that at the time, 1997, you're looking at guys like Stone Cold, The Rock, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and it's a crowded feel up top. Yeah. I get that, but Kurt Angle did it. Yeah, Kurt Angle got in there with all yeah. those guys. Yeah. So at any point, you could have had Mark Henry, but then they gave him the sexual chocolate thing. They gave him the May Young thing. And how can you really have a legit world champion at I know, that time? I know. Imagine if they'd pushed him immediately like they eventually did with the Hall of Pain thing. Monster yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Going out there and destroying everybody. Yeah, yeah. That would have been awesome. But then let him slip in some personality. Give him exactly. some of like that rock personality where he's got the silk shirts on yeah, and the yeah, sunglasses yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I don't know why you don't do that. I really don't. Um, I think in recent years you've seen a bit of a change. I think Vince McMahon has been a bit more – I think he's been more open – um, to to this idea, I mean, you look at the new day, and we've heard we had heard reports like a year ago that he wanted to make the new day. Well, he wanted to cement them as the greatest tag team ever. Yeah, exactly, and which I think would be a, a wise move. I think that um, the idea, and I'm we've said this a million times so far since SmackDown, Kofi's probably going to win that title at Mania. Mm-hmm. That tells you something as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've had uh, you know we've had uh, Naomi. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was I thought she had a decent run. I know a lot of people criticize it, but I thought she was she was pretty terrific. Yeah. Um, and I know there's other names. I mean Shelton Benjamin. I know that we're not talking about the world title, and that's what we're, we're sort of referring to here. But uh, but I think he's probably more open um, these days. Uh, and again, I don't want to get in his headspace. I don't know what he's thinking. Yeah. No idea. But. You know, I think that there are a couple examples of times when oh, there's like, several examples Man, where you really should have pulled the trigger yep, on this. You totally, really should have totally, totally. Yeah. And I think eventually, and I think you're right. They will with Kofi. Um, they, it seems like they kind of almost have to at this point. Yeah. Um, the momentum is behind them. Popular opinion is behind them. People want to see it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah, you're right. There's been several guys that have mm-hmm. been overlooked. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, let's see here next. Joshua Martinez, this time without his expert cinematography skills. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, friendos. 
home from school today because it was snow day, so no classes at the university. So sadly, no video of me walking and impressing you guys with my camera skills. Um, just so you guys know, I'm not using anything special. Literally just my phone, which is a OnePlus 6T. So I guess that's my trick. Anyways, so I don't know if you guys saw the picture of Chris Jericho and Triple H that they took together, I think, at Ric Flair's party. Um, maybe I'm reading too much into this. Could, be, could this be a sign that when Triple H takes over for Vince, like he's not going to be as aggressive and not try to take over companies? Um, I think he might be a nicer person to get along with, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Joshua. He had uh, uh, some inclement weather. Yeah. Get between him and his expert production skills. <laughs> so uh, will effectively Triple H be as cutthroat as Vince is now as far as signing talent, mm. taking over? Heck yeah. We think mm. global localization is all about. Taking over. Instead of just going out and buying territories or, 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 or that you're, he's going to be establishing NXTs around the world to push all the local federations more or less out of business. Or in the case with the the promotions in the United Kingdom, sign deals with them where the WWE can buy them yeah. and then uh, shutter them should they choose to do so, Yeah, which is weird. That's really weird. A little but weird. At the least, though, they're weird. taking the, the, the cream of the crop of the talent, signing them to exclusive deals. So uh, by and large, they can only work for, in this case, NXT UK. Um, and then, you know, maybe a handful of affiliated promotions. Otherwise, they can't work anywhere else. Yeah. And it's really going to, for a while, you know, it's, it's a cyclical thing where top flight talent gets signed. They move upwards in terms of larger promotions. New talent's constantly developing. Mm -hmm. um, so in another year or two, I think the United Kingdom scene will be, will still be healthier or healthier than it might be now because so many of the top t top tier talents have been signed up. Um, but this is going to be, if Triple H has his way, going to be happening across the world. Yeah, I'm kind of curious as to what his long game is. I mean, beyond just saying that it's WWE everywhere, like WWE's the McDonald's of wrestling. Yeah. Um, I, I will say this. He's going to be less weird than Vince. I think Triple H is going to be a bit more open to, I'm going to say this, possible talent exchange. Possible. I mean, we've seen it on the lower level. Companies that are happy to work, evolve. Companies yeah, that are yeah. that'll work with. But... I could, you know, Jericho said that he hit up Vince to do an IC champ versus IC champ match at like Mania, right? Yeah. Rollins versus him. I think it was what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, New Japan versus WWE. And of course, uh, New Day had been lobbying yeah. to have a match against the Young Bucks and Kenny. I think that kind of thing is a lot more possible when Vince is gone. I could be completely wrong. I could be completely and totally yeah, wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. Um, but here, here's the thing. I would think it's it's more like this. WD, and they establish NXT Japan, and it ends up just being New Japan and NXT Japan, uh, and everybody else is gone. And when they don't consider another company to be a threat, like, for example, Evolve, not a threat. In fact, they can utilize them to help develop their own talents, yeah. If, if, if WWE gets to the point where they're so big that it's impossible to consider anybody else competition, then we might see some talent exchange. Yeah, maybe. But that I think it would take a lot for New Japan to lose so much that they would not be considered. Competition. Same with All Elite, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, it's so silly. It's, it's funny because it's like, if I did funny, like it's ignoring the competition – I mean, is that like a, do people are people not supposed to know that? I don't know. It's probably bad business to do business with your competition, but I don't know. I could see him just being less weird. That, that's I think that's the thing. Yeah. When we've heard people say, "Hey, I approached Vince with X Y Z," even when when you look at it, and you're like, "Man, there's no downside to WWE." You know, how many times does Bruce Pritchard on his podcast say, "Oh, well, that's just Vince." You know, he just, yeah. "Well, goddamn, I don't want to do that." Yeah. Just set in his ways, yeah. Set in his ways. I think Triple H probably has a bit more open mind to certain things that Vince doesn't. Well, I think he has a greater appreciation for wrestling outside of WWE than I Vince think he has. knows about yes. <laughs> exactly. And I think Vince and sort of shielded himself. He might. I don't. I don't. I, I don't have any uh, way of knowing this with any degree of certainty. He might see the value in cross promotional stuff. Yeah. Whereas Vince thinks WWE is end all be all of wrestling. Yeah. And that it would in Vince's mind probably lowering himself to work with anybody else. I think Triple H would understand that sort of a talent exchange thing 
would only boost, as you've said many times in the past, the cool factor. Cool factor, man, means a lot. And it wouldn't do anything to harm them, and it would never boost. You know, if if it raises your cool factor by 13%, yeah, and it does the same for all elite by 13%, you're not doing any damage. You're not doing any damage to your own company. You're not no. helping out the other guy, so why not do it? Yep, that could be that could be a philosophy, but I I have no idea. I don't know. He could be more cutthroat. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea either. Next up from the Freak Legion, Loki. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, Stephen Larson. Loki Richard here with this week's Matt Chat question. The way Vince McMahon allegedly uh, thinks about his superstars, if he thought that way back in the day, do you think superstars would have gotten as popular as they have been? Like, uh, example, would Rocky Maivia ever became The Rock? Would the Ringmaster ever become Stone Cold? Have fun with the bait. I'll see you soon. Thank you, Loki. Thank you, Loki. So, Larson, would The Rock or Stone Cold? They had still been a big deal if Vince... Yeah. Uh, They're sharks, man. Yeah. yeah. They were highly ambitious. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure, I'm guessing Vince's philosophy now that essentially no one is above WWE. So like the NFL, nothing, no no player, sorry, so like the NFL thinks that no player is above the shield. Mm-hmm. No one talent should be bigger than the the entity. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure a lot of that was formed based on his experience developing talents like Stone Cold Rock, John Cena, yeah. uh, talents that have. Uh, uh, transcended wrestling become these huge mainstream stars even to a slightly lesser extent Brock Lesnar he has leverage because he can go to UFC and make a ton of money Um, where he feels like okay I spent all this money and time developing these talents only to see them eventually leave and go make movies or do something else Um, uh, opportunities which I Vince McMahon can't capitalize on as readily as if they were just in the ring therefore we'll make stars but not huge mainstream stars so therefore they have no leverage over me essentially going forward um, I think a, that philosophy was probably largely formed due to the experience of having stars. Again, I guess I can go back to even as far as Hogan. Um, Let me ask you something, though. Do you, do you think that philosophy, do you think that's actually something he thinks? Because, man, if you look at Roman Reigns, he sure seems like he's being pushed like the guy. I mean, he's supposed to be the next Cena. Yeah. And that ultimately, that ultimately logically follows through to the mainstream. No, I know. I never really understood the idea that they don't want to develop huge mainstream stars. I would think you would want, cause I've talked about this before so many times where they bring in part timer, part timers to pop, you know, buys for mania or whatever ratings for raw or SmackDown and at, at the, and, and doing so sacrificing time on their program for some of their own developed talent mm-hmm. or the guys who were on TV full time. And in the process, they can't elevate those guys to the same stratosphere as the part-timers. Yeah. It's it's so in 10 years when those part-timers just can't do it anymore, what are they going to do to try mm-hmm. to pop ratings? Um, if, if they haven't put in the, the time and money and equity in developing these newer talents, it just doesn't make sense mm-hmm. long-term. Yeah. Um, but I guess, you know, if, if the strategy is... is If the strategy is making Vince the most indispensable part of WWE... From a, 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 a financial standpoint, mm-hmm. you know, say if wasn't there like one of the recent financial calls, there was like a discussion, you know, should Vince be incapacitated or leave or whatever? They start talking chain of command. I thought I read somewhere. Oh, maybe that um, sounds familiar. But I think you know, I think we mentioned this before. Should anything happen to Vince? Should he retire? Should he pass away suddenly? That stock price is going to plummet. Yeah, that's true. Because people, investors, associate Vince with WWE and think, well, if Vince isn't with WWE anymore, there's no way they could survive. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'd be in his mind, he thinks for the financial health of the company, that's a better way to market it as WWE, yeah. the company, rather than here's these awesome wrestlers we have under our employ that you should really be paying attention to. I'll even I'll even go so far as to say that he he desperately wants another Cena who eventually would go into the mainstream because of what you see with Roman Reigns. Put him on, you know, Good Morning America to talk about his cancer thing. He, I'm sure Vince probably has some say over whether or not he can do that that movie with The Rock. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Uh, He's their WB contract, I'm sure he, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, he let him do it. If Roman becomes a big-time star, that's just one more guy where 10 years from now, like The Rock now, you know, Vince will be able to call him up, you know, hey, we need a big name, you know. 
So I don't know. I've never really thought that. that and I think the first time we heard that was like from Ryback anyways. Yeah, no. So I'm not even sure. I, I really doubt that's the case. I mean, I understand the general philosophy of we don't want guys who can have leverage, but I don't know. I think you'd f- the idea of having a big mainstream star far outweighs that. Absolutely. I do think this, though. There is the possibility because The Rock, in the end, really was, in my opinion, so in the world of wrestling, I think Stone Cold was tops oh, yeah, and Rock was absolutely. like one B. Yeah. Obviously, in the world of Hollywood, this is how it played out. Rock was one A and Stone Cold wasn't even there, yeah. basically. You yeah. know, he didn't like doing acting. And on top of that, I just think The Rock is better suited for that. Yeah. He has the charisma that translates on the movie screen. Yeah. I think that. We would have seen a situation where Rock probably, and maybe this is the difference, Rock might have been pushed as 1A and Stone Cold 1B, like Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. Um, I think that The Rock would have been the guy that they're grooming, they're trying to make the guy. Um, I think that regardless, those guys have so much talent that all the the push, push, push. and roll. Now, if he tried to push, push, push The Rock as simply a face the entire time, and and he and they didn't allow The Rock to have the edge that took mm-hmm. him to to such superstardom. Mm-hmm. Um, it it might have been a bit different. I'm yeah. not sure he would have reached the stratosphere. I don't know. Uh, but uh, but I don't know. Those guys were such immense talents. That oh yeah, I, yeah. I don't they were think so ambitious too. I don't think any situation. Yeah, exactly. I don't think any situation would have would have hampered them in a way. Yeah. No, anyway, no. Uh, next, Richard Morris has a question. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, Stephen Larson, this is Richard Morris here with another Matt Chat question. After Fastlane, where do you think they're going to go with Finn Balor? Um, I'm sure he's probably going to come out of Fastlane with the Intercontinental Championship. But then what are they doing with him after that? Who's his opponent at WrestleMania? Thank you very much. Too sweet and a hearty handshake. Thank you, Richard Morris. Thank you, Richard. What's next for Finn Balor after Fastlane? I'm going to say this. I think that he hasn't pinned Lashley in a true fashion, real match type situation. I think he'll probably do that at Mania um, and retain his IC title. But I think we're going to, in the meantime, we're going to get a Leo Rush face turn. Mm -hmm. And Leo's probably going to help in some manner. I know that probably, uh, that contradicts itself. It's not a true victory unless you do it by yourself. But maybe Leo prevents Lashley from cheating somehow yeah, yeah, and yeah. evens the playing field, yeah, and that's, therein lies the logic. It does seem like they're going to continue this, though. Yeah. It could be a situation where if they have a match at Fastlane, Leo, to, to try to earn Bob Lashley's trust back, helps him win, only for the relationship to continue to uh, you know, self-destruct, leading into Mania. Mm-hmm. They have a rematch there. Finn ultimately wins. Mm-hmm. And as you said, maybe Leo prevents... Bob Lashley from cheating to win. There's going to be some combination of Finn, Bobby Lashley, and Leo Rush more likely hitting into Mania. Yeah. I know the exact formula could be a triple threat, mm-hmm. could be one on one. Who knows? Yeah, triple threat would be. I'd be interesting if they. I mean, if they try to, if they try. I think that they could have a very effective face turn on their hands with Leo mm-hmm. Rush. Um, and they they need to kind of be careful. They're going to do a triple threat with two faces in the match. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, it could be the kind of thing where Leo's ultimate face turn is him uh, turning on Lashley and kind of sacrificing himself. It could be a situation where Lashley's going to win the match Mm -hmm. at Mania. Leo prevents him. There's a disagreement. Finn takes advantage to win himself. And afterwards, that's when we have the final parting of ways between Bob Lashley and Leo Rush. Yeah, that could be. And so the face turn in earnest begins after that could be too. mania that therefore you don't take anything, anything really away from Finn's win. Yeah. yeah. Going into it, Leo still kind of a heel ish. Maybe. Yeah, that could be next up. Perry Smythe has a question about the McMahon shake up. Yeah. Hey friend, uh, Steven Lawson, Perry here, the Australian match at 1022 this week. And I've got a bit of a weird question for you. Alternate universe question time. If Roman Reigns hadn't left, if his cancer hadn't come back and he'd stayed Universal Champion, and if the Raw ratings hadn't dropped enough that the McMahon shakeup hadn't happened, where do you think we'd be right now heading into WrestleMania? What storylines do you think would be the same, and what do you think would be different? Thanks, guys. Thank you, Perry Smythe. Thank with you, your, Perry. With your alternate universe question. You love alternate universe questions. I do. I do. I'm kind of. I'm kind of. I didn't. I didn't really write down an answer on this one. Uh, you go. You can go first. Oh, so let's say. Uh, 
Roman's leukemia never came back. Ratings didn't drop. Therefore, there's no McMahon shakeup. Would anything have really changed? Don't know if it would have, but I don't know how what we're seeing now, if any of that was in any way put in motion prior to any of these things happening. I just don't know. It, the, the question is this. There's, there's two things. I think there's actually two factors to the McMahon shakeup. One is, of course, the ratings. The other is all elite wrestling. Mm -hmm. When you start having superstars come up to you and say, hey, I can make a, a lot of money over I'm there. I'm not happy here. And I'm not happy. Uh, things need to change. Then that's going to wake them up as well as the ratings. Um, I don't know if there it, – it, it, it feels like there was a wake-up. I mean, you got guys like Andrade Almas out there, and they let them do what they're doing. The Revival are the tag team champions, even though they're getting pinned. They're losing all over the place. Um, Alistair Black and Ricochet are on main roster. They're on main roster, and, and they're booking them to the moon. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, there there are some changes. You know, no Baron Corbin. Um, it, it could be, I'll put it this way. If the ratings were half of it, and if All Elite's presence was the other half of it, maybe we would have some of the changes that we've got but not all the changes we got. It could be that maybe Vince, um, okay, so here's one example. In the case of Kofi Kingston, maybe Vince understanding that, uh, Vince might be less apt to listen to the fans chanting mm -hmm. and listen to his own gut. If he is behind Kofi because the fans seem to be so into it and he originally wanted to be Kevin Owens, Maybe they, maybe Kofi and the New Day would have been in a thing with like the Usos or something right yeah. now, you know? Yeah. Like maybe he just, it would have been like, oh, we just get Kevin Owens. But at the same token, maybe we would be seeing Andrade versus Ray because Andrade was telling his friends not to go. Yeah. So it could be that kind of situation. Maybe we would have had about half the results of the shakeup than we did now. Yeah. Maybe but, just an increased emphasis on the quality of the wrestling, something like that. Yeah. Like if, if he had addressed the concerns of the people who said they weren't happy, yeah. then maybe that's a possibility. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Next up from Christopher Rapperside. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, Stephen Lawson. So I have some time to show a match question before I start doing plans for my birthday. So my question is Alistair Black. Who had the better few with him? John Gargano or Volvatine Dream? The better match, better promos. What did you think was the better feud for Oscar Black? I might go with Velveteen Dream because they made both of them be the bigger stars. But Gargano and Black, that was a great match. I don't know what you guys can pick. You two should debate which is better. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Christopher. The better story was the Velveteen Dream feud. Velveteen Dream. The better match is was Johnny Gargano. Probably. They had that awesome takeover match. Johnny Gargano's a better wrestler. And they had a really good cage match on NXT TV. The fact that it's all wrapped into the Gargano Ciampa thing makes it interesting. Just yeah, the interpersonal also, dynamics between Dream and Aleister Black were amazing. Yeah, that's the thing. Aleister Black was a was a pit stop for Gargano and Ciampa. He was sort of a subplot for another story, whereas Aleister Black Velveteen Dream was their own Was thing. the story for them, so, yes. And I just, I really enjoyed the simplicity of it. Didn't take very long. It was very effective. They didn't have to do a lot. And the match was really good. Yeah, it was really good. But I'll, yeah, in a bubble, in a vacuum, that Gargano, Aleister Black match. Oh, the takeover match was phenomenal. Oh, my God. Wow. They didn't let up. No. Nope. They just kept going, kept on beating each other up. Yeah, it was great. Oh, boy. Xena 64. He's got a question. Let's oh, see what he has great to say. Question. Salutations, friendo. So, now that the Hulk Hogan biopic movie is underway, I want you guys to pick three mainstream actors and three uh, wrestlers to be casted in the the biopic. Like, who should play Macho Man? Who should play the Ultimate Warrior? The Iron Sheik? Sergeant Slaughter? Um, so, yeah. Three actors and three wrestlers. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Zenith64. Thank you, Zenith64. All right, I'll go first. Yeah, you go man. first. All right, so first of all... We kind of split up some of the major players that need to be in this movie, so three each for us. That's perfect. That's yeah. perfect. First of all, who did Hogan win that title from in the first place? The WWF title? Iron Sheik, baby, make your handbell break your back. I can't think of anybody I'd like to see more than Oscar <laughs> Isaac. I think he's a terrific actor. He I is. love him in all those Star Wars movies and in all the other movies that he's been in. He's fantastic, and I could see him playing a killer Iron Sheik. I would love to see him try to do that 
impersonation yeah. without cracking up. Yeah, I know. Because it's so great. Uh, another guy, uh, a fellow Marvel Comics Universe uh, 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 alum, Captain America himself, Chris Evans, but in the role of Rowdy Roddy Piper. That's good. Chris Evans tweeted out that he, it was the best news he had ever he seen. Loved that he loved it. That Hemsworth is playing Hogan, and I love that. Uh, so that's great. And then this is my most inspired choice here. Again, sort of throwing back to the Marvel Universe. Yeah, I love these Marvel players. Who do you want from? Uh, who do you want to play Andre the Giant? Which is you know probably where this movie should end. The big Andre WrestleMania three match. Give me Mark Ruffalo, who I think actually could do a really really good Andre the Giant. Maybe. Probably maybe, but make him CG. How Something weird else. would that That'd be? Very be? Weird. It would be fantastic. That would be weird. If you're in a Hogan movie, you need Macho Man in it. Give me Robert Downey Jr. as Macho Man. <laughs> that's, a, that's that's an interesting choice. Um, for the Ultimate Warrior, should they go as far as uh, uh, WrestleMania 6? Um, why not Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, okay. And this is my most inspired choice by far. Paul Orndorff. <laughs> He had a huge feud with them in like 86. <laughs> this is so messed up because it's orned off when he's like, what, 40 years old or something? Yeah. And you're going to go with the 70-year-old. Eric Roberts. <laughs> he looks a lot like Porno- Paul Orndorff. He does, but he's also seven years old. I know. He looks so much like right. Orndorff looked like he was 70 Put him in at a the muscle. time. Put him in a muscle suit then. Yeah, right. that's good. Eric Roberts can get jacked. How old is Eric Roberts right now? He's got to be at least he's 70. He's got to be in the 60s. 60s, you think? Yeah. 62? He looks older than that. He looks exactly like Orndorff, though. Yeah. He really does. See, I told you, it's good casting. Yeah, he looks exactly like him. <laughs> how like how old was Orndorff back in 1985? He was probably early 40s. He looked like he was 50. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. He was born in 49. Oh, hey. He's, oh, so he's 36. He's 69 right now. Nice. He was 36. Yeah. Men were built differently back then. Next up, B-Man, Patrick B-Man, Sparks. Patrick Sparks. Hey, friend, it's Pat here. All right, so DX is going into the Hall of Fame, but there were rumors that the Hart Foundation was going to go into the Hall of Fame. Still could, but it's a mystery on which iteration of it it would be, whether it be Brett, uh, Anvil, and Jimmy Hart, or add Owen in there. So my question is about Owen. When's Owen actually going to get into the Hall of Fame? When do you think his wife is actually going to allow these things and allow him to be, you know, just appreciated and loved and given the accolades that he deserves in the Hall of Fame and whatnot? So, when's he going in? Is he going to go in alone? Will he go in with the Heart Foundation? And when's it going to be? Thanks for those. Bye. Thank you, B-Man. I think the answer is uh, pretty simple. Once Vince McMahon's gone, I think uh, Owen's wife probably blames Vince for Owen's death. And I think once Vince is gone, uh, and when I say gone, I probably mean passed away. There might be some sort of the anger might be along the lines of you're not going to be around to see him, but he's going to get it. You know what I mean? Maybe. I don't know. Again, you have to get into somebody's headspace, and I just don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I would speculate it's whenever his wife wishes it to happen. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. That's who I'm talking about, his wife. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, whether that's after Vince is no longer involved with the company mm-hmm. or she just suddenly one day has a change of heart, I don't know. I think, like once Vince... U- ultimately, it's her decision. I think when Vince can no longer profit from it is, is a healthy speculation, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe next year. Yeah, who knows? Could <laughs> be this year. As far as the Heart Foundation, I... Hey, let me ask you it's something. Gonna be, it's going to be Brett and Anvil. Let me ask you something. That version, what? Honky Tonk Man. He actually debuted. I thought he. I thought, like you said, I thought it was a little bit later, but he was in. He debuted in WWF 1986. Oh, okay. All right. Is it weird to do an Elvis impersonator gimmick nine years after Elvis died? I guess Honky Tonk Man didn't think so. <laughs> That's weird. I kind of feel like there's probably Elvis impersonators all over the place, like right after he died. Well, I think there were Elvis impersonators While before he, was alive, he died. Yeah, but I mean, I guess it'd be no different than like a Michael Jackson impersonator now, which isn't that weird. Yeah, it's been what ten years. Since? I think it's been around ten or nine, almost ten, 10 years. years. Yeah, I don't know. It, the whole thing seems weird to me. Like if somebody showed up, dude. If somebody showed, I know Michael Jackson impersonator is not like a normal thing. <laughs> like Elvis impersonators, 
There isn't anybody else more impersonated than Elvis, is there? There's no other real like impersonators. I know a lot of people like do Trump now, but like in terms of like tri- making money tribute off. acts, tribute acts, making money off. Yeah, there's a lot of Beatles tribute tribute acts. Yeah, that go so far as to dress like the like them, get their haircut like them. But they were so. I mean, their early years they were so nondescript. Anyways, you know, the bull haircuts. Yeah, bull haircut and a suit. Yeah. I mean, once you get a Sergeant Pepper, it's a bit different. But like Elvis, which is, was such an iconic thing. Well, it's, it's, I feel like more often than not, they focus on a very particular point in Elvis's career, which was the Vegas years. Oh well, yeah, because that was the flashiest when he had the jumpsuits with the rhinestones and stuff on it. Oh yeah. So yeah, I don't know. That's a tough question. I was watching that. Day. I was like, man, that was weird. Like, what's your gimmick, Elvis impersonator? What if somebody showed up today? I was like, what's your gimmick, Michael Jackson impersonator? What? We're gonna have to rebrand you. Yeah. You know, well, um, Lacey Evans is is kind of like impersonator of fifty starlet. Yeah, but that's a very broad thing. Oh, I know, but that's what it is. <laughs> and on top of that, they did that to her. Yeah, <laughs> she didn't come in and say, "What's your gimmick?" Ah, I'm a time traveler. Well, no, she's not a time traveler. She's inspired. I'm like Honky Tonk Man is not a time traveler from nine years prior. <laughs> He's an Elvis enthusiast he's now. He's not Elvis who found a time machine. And no, he's he's current enthusiast. Decided to make. Her. And maybe Lacey <laughs> Evans is also. I mean, this was her idea. Current, uh, nineteen fifties Hollywood glamour enthusiast. Mm, could be. I like time traveling. I know. I don't think it's a time travel situation, Steve. Uh, next question from Stephen M. Speaking of traveling, he yes. has a question about traveling to the ring. Yeah. Hello, friend. This is Stephen M. Here with the match I wish him. Currently up on the roof of my shed because it's a beautiful day here in Galway, Ireland, and hopefully it'd be a beautiful day for WrestleMania in New York. So I was wondering, what WrestleMania? Who should have a special ring as WrestleMania entrances this year? I feel like everybody should, and what should they be? Pitch a few ideas, debate them, and maybe Randy Orton will come in on that giant mechanical snake. Too sweet, right handshake, shoulder. Thank you, Stephen M. Thank you, Stephen M. Uh, okay. You got a good answer. I'm going to go with mine because it's so overboard. <laughs> mine isn't. <laughs> go ahead. Um, so uh, the Shield, before uh, Seth matched against Brock, they all enter the uh, the stadium. There's an armored uh, police vehicle. Yeah, okay. You know, like the one at the end of Terminator uh, 2, right? Okay. Yeah, With yeah, all the yeah, weapons yeah. and yeah. stuff in it. That's good. It comes out on the ramp yeah, from violent. the stage. It starts going down the ramp. It's followed by a, like a full SWAT escort. Oh, my goodness. They got the little armored tank doodad, mm-hmm. guys with body armor, all That's of good. that. Um, out of the armored vehicle, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose. Yeah. Seth hits the ring. Dean and Roman in his corner. Uh, that's what it is. What do they, what do, they do this with the shield? Sirens blaring, all that. Remember HBK's like, thing? Zipline, yeah. Zipline? What if they have all three of them on ziplines go down and then they all just sort of awkwardly bump into each other at the That'd bottom? That'd be funny. Uh, I got Becky Lynch. But on the stage, there's a hologram of Johnny Cash and then also Tupac uh, for a man comes around performance. You know how they said Tupac is like one of the most prolific, like he had recorded dozens and dozens of albums yeah. of material yeah. uh, before he died yeah. uh, violently. Um, well, you just dig out one of those tracks that has that you could potentially conform to the to man comes around. All right. And uh, and you, you have him as a hologram. But next to Johnny Cash, why not just have a Johnny Cash impersonator then? That'd be kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they, they, I guarantee you they're buying the rights or they're getting licensing rights for Man Comes Around. If they don't do that. That's stupid. Yeah. Lights go down on the screen. It's black man. and white. Yeah, Man Comes you Around's know. video package. But then it's that song during the video package. Then, oh. <laughs> When she actually comes down the road. Right. Yeah. And then Hologram Tupac is there. Yeah. <laughs> he should host a Hologram Tupac. Oh, wow. Oh, Next, Nikolai. Question submitted last week. Let's see what Nikolai has to say. Hey, Finders. Nikolai here. Uh, my question this week to you guys is, this Monday we saw a lot of NXT superstars go to WoW, but not anybody at SmackDown. I couldn't see a lot of talent getting very, very lost, unfortunately. Do what do you guys think? Because two of the superstars from NXT have championship. So what do you guys think will happen? Okay, guys, take care and too sweet. Thank you, Nikolai. 
Thank you, Nicholas. I mean, as we've seen with the previous batch of NXT calls, prior to the more recent batch, yes, it's very easy to get lost in the shuffle. However, given how they've been booked so far, especially Alistair Black and Ricochet, they seem to be focusing on them quite a bit. I think money is money, mm -hmm. and Alistair Black and Rick I do, I do, I am kind of worried about Gargano and Champa. I think it's more has to do with the NXT storylines. I hope else. you're right. Or I maybe mean, Champa actually did hurt his knee. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. But I am That's kind of concerned for them. I have no concerns for Alistair Black. Now that I say that, they'll probably bury him. Um, but yeah, I hope that they'll tell him to drop ten pounds and send him to two hundred five live. Oh God! Well, hey, that's a that's a legit concern for Champion Gargano. I don't think that's going to happen. Alex yeah, Black, probably not. Uh, I don't think that's a legit concern for Champion Gargano. Nah, they'll be a tag team on main before they do that. Our final question comes to us from a new Matt Chatter, Ben Sargent. Let's see what he has to say. Hey there, uh, this is Ben, longtime friendo, first time Matt Chatter, and I wanted to send you this uh, question. It might be a little lengthy. I know Steve likes them short, but because this is my first one, hopefully I can get a pass. My question is about Degeneration X and them going into the Hall of Fame. Um, there's been a lot of, you know, on the internet, everyone being upset or because China's not going in by herself. She's going in with DX. And, you know, I just don't get it. I mean, China definitely deserves to be in on her own. I mean, I grew up in the Attitude Era. I'm 34 years old. I was flipping channels, Nitro, Raw, just like everyone else back then. Um, I recently listened to Xbox podcast where he talks about how he went in the Hall of Fame. And he just said, this is a win. You know, he, he called China's sister, and they hadn't talked since China, Xbox and China had been together, and she was happy, their family's happy. Billy Gunn said the most exciting part of this is that China's getting in too. Um, X-Pac also said, you know, the host that he has on his podcast asked him, you know, You'll, everyone should go in individually too, right? And he says he doesn't care about that. If he had to pick, he would rather go in with his friends, the people he had the best time with, than go in by himself. And also, I think, you know, once China gets in with DX and the world doesn't explode, then eventually, the next few years, she will get in too. So, to me, it's a huge win. I know you guys on your show express sentiment that you're disappointed, that they didn't put her in. You know, she should be in, and I totally agree, but there's been so much hate online. I just wanted to have my first match hat question address that. What do you guys think? Thanks. Too sweet. Hearty handshake. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Um, you know what? I was I was kind of bummed out that she didn't get inducted as a solo act at first, and then Triple H did an interview about it where he said, um, China, could she go into the solo act? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, It'll yeah. probably happen someday. Absolutely. And so I heard that, and I was like, all right. He gets it. Mm -hmm. He understands that maybe if things had played out a bit differently, she would should she would have gone in on her own. That dude, for sure, has a soft spot in his Definitely. heart for his... Definitely. So... No, I'm not really upset about it. It was even back when we first talked about. It, I was like, yeah, it's kind of a modest bummer that didn't happen. But given how everybody's uh, in, completely enthused about going in as the group as DX, mm -hmm. um, no, I can't. Yeah, I, I can't seem, really quibble about it. There seems to be just a lot of enthusiasm for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, dude, everybody's gonna. <laughs> yeah, they get they give you an inch, everybody wants a mile sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, and I get it. Like it's totally fair to say, yeah, she should go in as she should go in as a solo competitor. But at the same time, you know, this is this is in in her situation, and I, I'm not going to say that I agree with it. But in her situation, this was the way to go for the WWE. You know, you put her in part of faction, and guess what? She's probably going to be one of the only people, along with Bret Hart and Ric Flair, to be a two time inductee. Shawn Michaels. I oh, want Shawn Michaels. That's right. Yeah, and yeah. then eventually Triple H, and then Triple H. Yeah, whenever he wants to. Um. So yeah. Absolutely. Good stuff. Anyways, that's it for Matt Chat. Thanks mm -hmm. so much for tuning in. Remember at the $20 Patreon, Mark. Mark, you too can be uh, submitting your video question for us to answer or debate here on Matt Chat. Till yes. next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye.